Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be bringing you a video going over Toast and how to run him in Xtreme. Um, there's going to be some footage at the end to show how to deal with some of the duo bosses, which he kind of struggles on. Um, Toast isn't a breaker that's going to be speedrunning. He doesn't necessarily do very fast speedrunning clear times. Uh, back when the bosses had a lot more health, we did alright with him on speedrunning just due to the poison status helping us a lot. But this is going to be pertaining more just to getting your clear and seasonal. Uh, if you look at the relics, it's a little unorthodox. This isn't usually what I tell people to run on breakers, but Toast makes good use of these relics, and we'll explain why I go forward. So let's go to the relics. To begin, with, we, to begin with, we have status effect target, attack defender, crit defender, and shock reactor. So status effect target is a great relic for damage multipliers. It reads a little worse than it sounds, uh, than it actually operates, sorry. So it reads 50% damage against enemies under a status effect. This implies that as long as an enemy is under a status effect, you're getting 50% damage multiplier, which isn't how it works at all. How status effect target and the all status stat that you'll see on your stat page actually functions is for each active status effect target with on uh, status effect on a target will give you 50% per status. So Toast is a breaker that has burn default. So but on his crash wave, for example, so he will be able to utilize 50% from this. And then you'll have poison from your Venom caster that you're going to be running. This is going to be an extra 50%. So that's now 100% from status effect target. Then you're going to have shock reactor that you can see equipped, which is going to bring you an extra 50%. That's now 150% multiplier just from status effect target for having just your base starter kit available to you. You could technically throw on some more reactors to utilize this, but then you're sacrificing some raw stats in favor for multipliers and you're not really helping your damage when you could just find those later into the run anyway. Um... That being said, now we're going to move over to the attack defender and the crit defender. Toast, being able to use these weapons that self-damage, allow him to make great use of these relics. So attack defender gives you attack power whenever you damage yourself. And attack power is a great stat as one. It's going to um, just increase your damage. It's it's the flat number that will increase all your damage and it goes at the start of all calculations. So you increase your attack power and then all the other stats will become more valuable as it'll take that attack power and multiply it by whatever their values are. And crit defender is just going to increase our crit when we take damage. Why is this important? Well, Toast has caster weapons, stuff like Venom Caster and Flamethrower, and I highly recommend the Venom Caster, as Flamethrower does burn damage to you after you get it below 40%, and the Venom Caster does poison damage to you when you get below 40%. Why does this matter? Well, aside from just giving us a bonus status by being poison instead of burn, poison does percent damage, which means it's going to hurt us less in comparison to the flat value of burn that uh, flamethrower is going to be doing to us our health values are much lower than bosses so one percent of toast's health is nowhere near as high as 200 percent of toast's um, attack power so when you drop this weapon below 40 percent it's going to start doing self damage to you which is going to start stacking these relics it's going to you can stand there before you even go into the first planet's boss fight and stack your attack defender full get 100 of the stacks, that's 200% uh, 200 attack power, bringing you up to 400 attack power before you start the fight, which is the equivalent of having Mercy equipped. But you don't have to remain at 100% health for this. It'll also stack your crit defender. Crit defender gives you 10% crit for 15 seconds, stacking up to five times. So 50% crit before you even enter the boss fight. These are easy to maintain as your weapon's also going to drop down below 40% in the fights themselves, damaging you and putting the buff back up. You might be worrying now about if you're hurting yourself so much, surely you'll just end up dying. No, the defense, again, the max percent health damage that this is doing to you is nowhere near as much as the burn damage from Flamethrower, but the fact that Singularity will actually outheal the damage that this brings to you. Shock Reactor, the reason we're using Shock Reactor over any other reactor is, one, we already have burn poison available to us via the Venocast and, Sh and Crash Wave, and now Shock is going to bring us a 50% armor shred, as well as the 50% multiplier for status effect target. But this is just a great addition, and you'll really notice the damage difference when you can have Shock on a target in comparison to not having a Shock on a target. Moving over to the um, relic drop rates. So we don't really care for a lot of uh, relics that are in this um, low things. If they're in low, it's either because we have them equipped already, like the shock reactor, or they're just things that aren't important. So we don't really care for movement speed when weapon not in use. We don't care for the skill power stuff. We don't care for charging greaves. We don't want to be spamming our skills anyway. We're going to be hurting ourselves. We can't use dodge greaves. We don't want to be standing still. If we're standing still, we're a, hitting, we're, we're a very val uh, vulnerable target as toast. For these reasons, we then go over to... Uh, wanting to put things like haste into there because we don't care about resetting our cooldowns either. We don't care about special charge. We don't care about charge module. All these things are just things that are counterintuitive to the way that we play Toast. 
going into high drop rates, we have weapon power stuff in it. This is a weapon build. We want weapon power, so we've got blood box, we've got extreme rounds. So we can technically put fat rounds up in it. Fat rounds being um, uh, power, high power rounds. Um, we can put speed mag in here. This is a 30% attack speed increase. Technically, you should drop this down and put in um, the 50% increase, but you're more likely to see speed mag. So just having this in high instead of the 50% means that you're going to see it more often. Uh, this is good. It gives you more consistency in your runs. Um, we have weapon out mag. If we're dropping our weapon low, you might be thinking to yourself now, well, we're going to be below 70% a lot. This isn't really going to be active that much. But with some tricks that you can do with a singularity that I'll go over in a minute, um, this is easy to maintain. As well as, you're going to have more uptime on these buffs than you might think, as it says 5 seconds on the card, but when you put in buff adapt on your seasonal upgrade tree, you're actually taking that 5% and then buffing it by the buff adapt, so it's going to last longer and you're going to be able to actually maintain these for a good portion of the fights. And with how some bosses have these immune frames that you can't do anything about and you're just kind of idling around or walking in circles, that gives you a chance to reapply these buffs anyway. So we're putting in Weapon Amp Mag, putting in Crit Power Mag. These are strong relics to really be taken advantage of. Got Crit Box, it's more Crit Power. We're going to look for some Attack Power based relics. So we want our Necklace of Giant Strength, we want our Medal of Honors, we want our Defense Suits of Retaliation so we can see them. These are all great finds and you should be looking for them. Then we're going to have some Reactors. We don't want Petrify Reactor, we don't need Burn Reactor, we don't need Poison Reactor, because we already have Poison and Burn. Petrify would just be a detriment to our damage, as Petrify adds armor to the target, and Toast doesn't have a natural way of defense shredding, so we can't counteract that. So we're going to opt to putting in Freeze Reactor for enough of 50% multiply when we can find it, and Bleed Reactor for a 50% multiply when we can find it, as well as bringing the valuable statuses that they bring. And then we have Mercy. So. Yes, we're hurting ourselves a bit. We're going to be dropping our health down, but thanks to the health regen from Singularity, the health regen we can get from Barricade, the health regen we have in our season upgrade tree, we're actually going to maintain Mercy quite easily. Um, moving over to our skills, we're opting to start with the shoulder tackle upgrade. This gives us 50% weapon power for 15 seconds when using shoulder tackle, up to three times. So 150% in total. This is really strong. This means you're going to be starting your fights with either 250 or 260 if you've got low weapon power in your season upgrade tree. That's really nice base stats, like that's basically the equivalent of having a blood box and an Exium rounds on at the same time. Um, as well as then having the attack power from attack defender and the crit from uh, crit defender. You're starting your first partner with some really nice stat lines already. We don't really care for too much of these upgrades, so we like the cooldown as this allows us to use it more often and maintain that buff easier as well as having it ac access to the tackle more which means we'll be able to start using it defensively as well. And then we're going to have an extra charge. This is nice. Same reason as the cooldowns. It's just he starts with two, so having three is extra nice. Don't care for the skill power, really. It's a weapon payout build, but sometimes you can't help what you're offered. And if you end up taking this, you're not really going to notice a big difference in your damage, but it's still a difference in damage. And then you can get the counter-attack uh, counter shielding. This isn't terrible on toast. Fights are a little bit longer, so you're going to have opportunities to actually proc this. So if this comes up and you feel like you need more safety, Go ahead and take it, otherwise don't sacrifice it for better damage options. Um, moving over to Crash Wave. Crash Wave has one big upgrade that we really want to find. It's hard to decide really which is better, either the Shoulder Tackle upgrade or this Multiplier upgrade. Personally, I end up going the Shoulder Tackle upgrade due to the way that Extreme works. You have a static pool on the five, uh, Planet 5 and Planet 9, so Planet 5 is always Arctic Gear, Planet 9 is always Protean Beast. Being the fact that Protean Beast is the hardest boss in the game and Protean Beast is the... Uh, Pretty much how you want to situate your runs for it. If you struggle on Protean Beast, you're going to struggle elsewhere. And if you don't struggle elsewhere, uh, and if you get to Protean Beast and you don't have things that you need for it, then you're going to suffer. Protean Beast being fire means he's immune to the burn status. That's the reason I'm not opting for this and I take the shoulder tackle instead. But we still want to find this within the run because it's going to speed up every other planet. Um, the difference between when you have this multiplier active and don't have the multiplier active is very noticeable and is actually an issue with the status system as that is one of Toast's main drawback is the status system itself and it's not so much an issue with Toast. Hopefully they address this. If they ever fix the immunities in this game so fire planets don't become immune to burn, you'll notice Toast will actually skyrocket in, in terms of DPS values. Um, other crash wave upgrades that are really need nice to get will be stuff like the cooldown this will give us access more to the iframe that crash wave can bring which means we'll start being able to use crash wave as a defense option for bosses uh defense it will be nice as well to scale into the uh attack power from defense re retaliation if we find it i wouldn't pick up this upgrade unless you find defense re retaliation otherwise you're going to have this stat just sitting there and there's possibly a better third option that you could have picked instead that would have done more for you over at barricades we really like this health upgrade actually 
if we can take this and find it and not sacrifice damage for it, this will help us maintain Mercy when we find Mercy, and as well as just keep us alive from some of the chip damage we might take from, say, Mountain Kraken or from any alert bots spawning him. Uh, the cooldown's nice, because every time that you summon your barricade, whilst you're in the animation of summoning your barricade, you're in an iframe. You need to take use of these iframes as toast to really survive. Um, the wall length and duration really isn't that big of a deal. Your cooldowns are really low anyway as toast, usually to the point where you can have a shield active whenever you actually need one. The length isn't needed either, as you can place your shield directly on top of bosses and destroy projectiles that way too. The defense near wall, not that great as well as the weapon power near wall is not actually that great. In a multiplayer setting, these things can work and you can stand inside them and get the buffs. But in a single player setting, the bosses are usually going to be running at you, forcing you away from the wall or occupying most of the room inside the wall to the point where you're not going to be able to stand in it really to utilize these buffs. There's very few scenarios we can against something like Sandshark or Medusa or Mountain Kraken, these bosses where they're idle and don't move. Um, but for the tougher bosses of the fight, stuff like Protean, you're going to be forced out of these walls. You're not going to be able to utilize them. And you're then taking upgrades that are doing nothing for you at the hardest part of your run. Over at Singularity. The Singularity debuff for 25% damage received for 10 seconds whilst they're inside the black hole is huge. This is a 25% damage multiplier. This is the equivalent of having a weak spot or a gold tooth active. Pick this up when you see it aside, uh, like alongside the crash wave upgrade. And you'll start noticing your damage scaling really well throughout the run. And it will only seem bad on the fights where Toast has issues due to the systems within the game. Um, this 100% recovery ammo and sources is not bad. So what you could do here, and why we will use this instead of Infinite Mag, as Infinite Mag is counterproductive to how we want to build and play Toast, is we want to be getting our ammo low... So it hurts us. You won't see it here because obviously we're inside a place where we're immune to damage. But once our ammo is low in this overheat stage, it's going to hurt us. If we get this upgrade, and I can demonstrate that real quick for you by buying it. Um, if we get this upgrade, what we could do is go into the fight, let our ammo get low during the fight so we're taking damage. And then once we're at a point where we feel like we need to reload, instead of reloading, we can throw our singularity out, get the buff, continue shooting and our ammo will start to regen like then you have the immune parts and you just basically extend that window where you're going to be able to shoot without having the drawbacks of having infinite mag preventing you from being able to utilize these self-damaging relics um so this is a really good thing to take and i suggest finding it where you can but prioritize the damage options over it the extra recovery it brings just means you'll be able to maintain mercy a bit easier if you find it as well um the black hole size doesn't really matter if you've got all the doo-doo options coming up and stuff that you don't really want, you can take this to help just CC the bots that might spawn in, but ultimately, you don't need it. Um, the cooldown's nice. That lets you do that trick more often than i just shown. And the weapon power is very nice, as this isn't something you have to stand near to get. You just throw out Singularity and you have it. That covers the skill upgrades. I hope that wasn't too rambly and there was at least something that you could understand and gauge something from. Weapon powers... Uh, weapons, we only want the Venom Caster. Unfortunately, Toast does his best damage when he has a lot of statuses up on the target, so you want to be having Venom Caster. Venom Caster will damage you as well. This will let you use your relics. If you're taking anything like the Cryo Caster, this doesn't damage you, so this won't let you use your relics. The Gatling Gun doesn't damage you, won't let you use your relics. And Missile Launcher doesn't damage you, so it won't let you utilize those self-damaging relics, which are the strongest way to really utilize his uh, Toast. Now, you can go Infinite Mag, you can go Single Shot Mag and Missile Launcher and do some decent damage that way but with the visual density and the particle effects just blurring vision it's not much damage to be gaining in favor for a setup that's easier to see easier to play more consistent to play so for that reason we stick with the venom caster option and utilize the strong elements that are available to us moving over to toy worker same as usual there's only two real options since we're not running bonus coin, we're more likely to run Goldhound this time. So we're going to take Goldhound, we're going to use that extra currency to be able to scale our relics up, scale our, um, through rolling the shop, seeing better Venom casters, seeing better relics available to us, and just have more consistent runs that way. You can technically take Medic V2, you're just sacrificing consistency of being able to roll and have more variety for just earlier gratification. This technically is inferior when you're doing these type of setups and i would only usually use medic v2 and this is something how you can gauge if you want to use medic v2 or not is if you have bonus coin in your default pool medic v2 then becomes a lot more valuable as you already have basically what goldhound's giving you 
But if you're not using it in your starter pool, please just default to um, Gold Hound. Season upgrades. I, there's no point in me really covering this, but you want to go down strategic and go to resources, get your extra extra currency where you can. Go down afterwards and get gain shield, uh, so you can ignore some of these uh, shield relics and health relics and stuff like that within the run. And then you pretty much just put points in status effect and max out wherever you can. The, I'm avoiding putting status effect duration because there's been no confirmation and it's hard to test and gauge things really, but this stat was bugged and probably still is bugged. And instead of reducing status effect duration that is present on you, it instead reduces status effect duration present on the enemies, which is just not something that we ever want within a game where status effects are our main multipliers. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I'm going to cut to some clips, uh, to a clip now, where I'm going to demonstrate how you can tackle duo bosses as Toast, as he doesn't really deal with AoE too well and high pressure situations, and kind of walk and talk through some things that you want to look out for. So, we're coming into Planet 4 here. We've got double Irish and Mammoths. This could be a pretty tricky fight for Toast in the long term, as they're pretty fast. Because there's two of them, they start in their enraged phase already, which means that they'll swing faster, their arms are going to be everywhere. When they slam on the floor, they'll charge towards you, and this could be very lethal, and could catch Toast off guard and cause big damage to him, and could pretty much be a run ender if, you, if you're not thinking ahead of time and preparing for these. So the way that we're going to tackle this, and I'm going to demonstrate something that I covered in the first part of this guide, where um, we can pre-stack, so you can see, we're before the boss fight. I'm going to run down my ammo a bit. You can tell by the relics as well, this is pretty straightforward from what I was covering in the guide, the things that we'll be looking for. And you can see now that we're stacking up our crit defender on the far right there, the star icon that's got the lightning bolt in the middle, the basically the blast looking icon, that's stacked to 5. And our attack defender on the left has just reached 100. So we've got big, big stacks before we even come into the fight. Um... So, coming so our overall strategy in this fight is going to be to run into the center at the start, have them prepare their charge attack, and then we're going to dash down towards the door. So that way they'll be grouped together in the middle, and this will make it so we can see them both at the same time. They're not going to be spread about, and we're going to be able to concentrate where we're going to have to fire our weapon and be able to kite them in tandem and not have to deal with them being all over the place. This is going to be the best way to survive. We're going to be using our shields for eye framing, and we're going to be using our crash wave for eye framing, as well as just trying to single target one down, so then we're only left with one of them. The reason why we're going to do single target damage is because although the Venom Caster looks like it does AoE, it only hits one target at a time. So we're going to go in, and we're going to put into practice everything I just said. So we're going to run into the center here. Dash downwards. Crash wave as they come to us. I missed. I'm going to then throw all my stuff, and we're just going to target this one down on the left now. As you can see, the one on the right runs over. We're going to dash away a little bit. They're going to get ready to slam, so we're going to back up. We're going to crash wave backwards so it hits him as he comes past, and just deal damage. Now that's one gone. We're much safer in this scenario now. Make sure to maintain our buffs, and now we can just take out the second one. This is pretty much how you want to handle all of the two boss fights. You want to target one down, have them grouped together, so you can keep an eye on both of them at the same time and not have to worry about foreign elements coming from the edges of the map and taking you out. And as you can see, the damage isn't that bad on Toast. It's not high, it's not big burst damage like Jungler, so you shouldn't really compare him in a speedrun setting to Jungler. Um, it's just not fair to him. But his throughput is good, and you can get by in runs just by utilizing the systems at bay, making sure to iframe where needed, and just take the fights a little bit at a slower pace and try not to get overwhelmed. I hope this guide has been helpful. Um, if you need more information, I could try to go further in the comments as well as try and provide extra footage somewhere. I would do a full run breakdown on Toast, but honestly, that would be a quite a long video. Um, i much rather just get segments and get clips where it's needed and help out this way. Um, it's, it's pretty painful on the throat to sit there and try and do live commentaries all the way through for like a 40 minute video. <laughs> but I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.